The next diet is actually a variation of the specific carbohydrate diet, and it's called the IBD AID diet, and the AID stands for anti-inflammatory diet. So this one's a really neat diet because it doesn't just talk about what foods are allowed or not allowed, it actually talks about groupings of foods as well. So it does focus on five pillars. And so the first pillar is on uh, probiotic rich foods. So it does encourage that we consume probiotic rich foods regularly. So for example, foods such as yogurt, kefir, kimchi, miso, and fermented veggies like sauerkraut. The next pillar is prebiotic foods. And these are essentially foods that are going to help feed the probiotics. I'm going to be reviewing this in a few slides. Um, and so these pro prebiotic foods, sorry, are oats, bananas, and ground flax seeds are a few examples. It does also talk about the avoidance of the foods on the foods not allowed list. So again, these are things like lactose, wheat, refined sugar, and processed foods. And it does incorporate aspects of good nutrition. So just kind of what we know about general healthy diet, encouraging lean proteins and some healthy fats. And then lastly, it talks about texture, which I think is really neat because texture is not something that is discussed too often in diets. Um, but essentially this diet talks about maybe having blenderized or very soft foods when your symptoms are acting up, when you're in a flare, and then potentially being able to tolerate the regular texture of foods as you progress towards remission. So right now, this diet is still lacking high quality studies, the effectiveness and the mechanism behind it is unknown. So that's why it makes recommending it really difficult for healthcare providers. Um, we also don't know the long term effects. Again, as long as there's um, a few foods on the foods not allowed list, there is always a risk for a deficiency, which we need to be mindful of. There was a case series done of 11 adult patients with IBD and they followed this diet for four weeks. And so the results showed that all of them were able to stop at least one of their medications. And they all felt that they experienced a reduction in their symptoms. But at present, we don't have any other data, especially any data on actual inflammatory markers or microbiome modifications. And again, it's just important to note that the 11 adults um, isn't a very large population study. So again, definitely hoping to have more studies done in this diet moving forward in order for it to be uh, recommended.